curve sketching. Let's put it all together with our, with, with our calculus. A curve sketching menu, if you like. So going right back to the start of curve sketching, things we look for are points of discontinuity. Bottom of the fraction can't equal zero, things like that. So we know we'll have some asymptotes. Um, well, speaking of asymptotes, if you've got a situation where it's polynomial over polynomial, do a polynomial division if, if possible, and that'll tell you the oblique or the horizontal asymptote. We've also had now a look at limits as well. Uh, if it's a horizontal asymptote, the limit as x approaches infinity will tell us what that horizontal asymptote is. So we've got a few ideas that will help us find asymptotes. Uh, now, on the actual curve itself, we now know stationary points, they occur when the first derivative is equal to zero. Once we locate those stationary points, we can classify them. Maximum ones will be when the second derivative is less than zero, curve's concave down. Minimum ones be when it's greater than zero, curve's concave up. And we could find possible points of inflection. Second derivative is equal to zero, locates the possibilities, and then we check to see whether there's a change in concavity. Whether you use the table of values to check either side, or there was the third derivative idea we could use as well. We know that the curve is going up or increasing if the first derivative is positive, because the tangent must have a positive slope, so it must be going up, and it must be decreasing if we have a negative slope for the tangent. So it's another thing we can pick up. And speaking of concavity, concave up, greater than zero for the second derivative, concave down, less than zero for the second derivative. So it gives us a whole heap of things we can use to put together to get a, a much more accurate graph than originally we started with. So let's just draw this. It's just a simple cubic. Let's pull out the tools we're gonna need. There's the first derivative. There's the second derivative. And there's the third derivative. Now, straight away I know, because the third derivative is a constant number 6, which is not equal to 0, I know that any possible point of inflection will be a point of inflection. I also know because it's a cubic, there must be a point of inflection. All right, let's find our station points. They happen when the first derivative is equal to 0. Solving that little quadratic, there is a common factor of 3. So, okay, x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Factorises nicely, we have two stationary points, 1 and 3. Okay, let's go classify them. Well, when x equals 1, my second derivative turns out to be negative, concave down. So I know that 1 and the y value, going back to the original equation, negative 1, is a maximum turning point. Sub in 3, coincidence, the number happens to be the same, but in this case it's positive. Positive 6, so it's concave up. So there's our minimum turning point. Now, reality. If they don't ask me to find inflection points, I'm not going to bother finding inflection points. Right. Now, in a continuous curve, one must always exist in between maximum and minimum. But I, I really don't care. Right. But if the question specifically says, find all the important features, then all right, I'm going to find inflection points. So let's assume that's what this question wanted us to do. So the possible points of inflection, second derivative is equal to zero. So possibility, 6x minus 12, so 2 is my possibility. And as I was mentioning before, well, my third derivative is just a constant 6, which is not equal to zero. So there must be some sort of change. Oh, I forgot to write, there's a check. That was bad. I should have written, therefore, change in concavity. You might want to add that onto your notes. Therefore, change in concavity. But we know 2, negative 3 is a point of inflection. All right, let's put it all together. There's 1, negative 1. And down there, 3, negative 5. Inflection point, 2, negative 3. Looks like it's a straight line, but it's, it's not. Trust me. Um, the y-intercept's easy to find, negative 5. The x-intercept is not easy to find, so I'm not going to bother. Too hard. Draw my curve, and look what I cleverly did so I didn't have to find the x intercept. If I could find it, I would. But x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 5 doesn't factorise nicely. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So 10f and g we'll play with. So we now have our curve sketching menu we can go and use.